Hey everybody, Jim Neeb here again from Jim Neeb Boardworks. Uh, today I have to retram my spindle um, because I need to move it down an inch from where it was. So I've actually done this now, but I recorded all the steps. And so I want to kind of show how I first square up the Z stage so it's perpendicular in both X and Y to the base because you want the travel to be perpendicular of the Z axis and then how I tram the spindle itself so that it's also perpendicular. Most uh, instructions that I've seen for tramming only cover the spindle, but you can have the spindle perfectly trammed and still have the Z traveling like in some extreme thing like 45 degrees. And the, what you don't want that, uh, the reason you don't like that is because as you're traveling up and down then if it's not perfectly straight, when you're trying to cut like sidewalls on something, every time you plunge a little farther, it's actually moving, you know, left or right or forward and back. So you're not, and you'll see little steps. Like if you have a straight end mill, you'll see steps as you're stepping down. Um, and that's a, that's a sign that you're not perfectly aligned as well. So um, you want to do the Z state first. It helps if the spindle isn't in the way. It's a lot easier to uh, uh, measure it and everything and adjust it with the spindle not there. And it's especially important when you're first assembling the machine because it's a lot easier to do it then than after you have everything attached. So I'm going to go through how I do it. Um, it's not the only way to do it, that's for sure. Um, but a lot of people have been asking about it, especially the, the Z uh, travel um, squareness. So this is how I do it. Hope you enjoy. And uh, if you have any questions, please post it down in the questions and comments. So first I'm starting oh, by aligning the Z uh, axis with it's the Z axis travel with my uh, spoil board in the perp basically to make it perpendicular. I'm starting in the front. So the front to back kind of direction or the Y axis, I guess you'd say Y direction. Um, you can see I, I clamp down a square, make sure it's <laughs> obviously a really square square. This is the one I use to set my table saw crosscut slide with so I know it's I've tested it with against a lot of other squares and I know this one's just about perfectly square so you want to clamp it down so it kind of stands by itself so you don't have to juggle too many things in this case you can see I've used a couple horizontal clamps to clamp it against some uh, bench dog stops on the other side which you can't see very good there but that clamps it and kind of holds it vertical and then I've clamped it down with a hold down clamp and this will keep it square uh, it's it's straight up and down the y-axis and it's also held vertical nicely so then I'll jog the whole gantry up close to that edge and what I want to do is get it as close as I can without actually touching anywhere along the vertical travel of the z-axis uh, my set of feeler gauges goes up to about 30,000 so you know I want to get whatever the minimum gap is either at the top or the bottom to be just about touching. So, you know, five to 15 thousandths or something like that. And then I'm going to use feeler gauges to assess the uh, verticality of that. Now here's a close up view of me actually measuring it with the feeler gauge. So one key thing is to make sure wherever you're measuring that against, uh, in this case, I've taken the spindle off and I'm measuring against the tramming plate. Make sure it's the same spot in the tramming plate when you're measuring at the top of the Z travel on the bottom because you don't want any variations in the flatness or anything of that plate to affect this. So in this case, I'm measuring right at the bottom of it. Um, so I'm gonna measure the thickness there and then I'm going to jog down to the very bottom and measure the thickness there. And the difference between those is the amount that I'm, you know, out of vertical. Uh, in this particular case, this axis was within about two thousandths of an inch from top to bottom. And I have a 12 inch Z axis. So um, for me, that's by far good enough. I'm not going to bother to shim it or try to align that any better. All right, now that I've determined my front to back alignment is good enough and I don't have to correct it any, I move to the 
side of the tramming plate with the square. So I've again clamped it to hold it uh, vertical and to hold it down tight against my um, spoil board. And you can see I've got the Z axis this time moved to the very top position and I'm using the um, upper bolt that holds the tramming plate on kind of as a marker where I want to measure between the tramming plate and the square. And so I'm here I'm measuring with uh, the feeler gauge to find out what that gap is. And then I'm going to Z down to the very bottom of the travel and measure it again without touching or moving the square. And that'll give me my difference. Um, and I can see if I need to correct it or not. All right, when I went to square up the Z axis to my tabletop, the travel part, not the, not the tramming of the spindle, um, basically I was off on my 12 inch travel, about 10 or 12 thousandths, which was a little more than I wanted. Um, unfortunately with this, you can't really shim because what you need to do is loosen the bolts between the a whole um, gear assembly here and the Z stage um, or loosen up the gear assembly itself but you basically need to be able to twist this whole thing in my case I had to twist it this way uh, a little bit um, I don't even know how you would get that off and then tighten it up and remeasure it without taking everything apart a million times uh, what I did was because it's a relatively long Z stage and I didn't have to move that much. I mean, again, it's 10 or 12 thousandths over a, a 12 inch travel. I actually just took a dead blow and gave it a few, I had to hit it pretty hard, but a few good wraps up here and then just checked. And I was actually, cause I really only needed to move it over like six thousandths up there. So being as it's a really long trip all the way down to the, the screws down here, uh, you know, those, it barely has to move back here to straighten this out. And this is a nice heavy, this whole Z plate is very heavy. So I'm not really afraid of damaging anything doing that. And like I said, I just needed to jog it over a hair. Um, I don't feel like it's going to come back very easily because I did have to wrap on it pretty hard, but you know, three or four good wraps, just take your time, um, and measure in between. That straightened it out really well now. So I'm within a couple thousands top to bottom in both the left to right and the front to back. Now if you want a little less violent method than smashing the top of your Z axis with a dead blow, you could probably also loosen the bearing uh, bolts um, for the X axis. Uh, probably loosen, just kind of loosen them but leave them a little bit snug and then tap on it lighter and then you could probably, um, there's probably enough play there, very little angular uh, movement down here these are pretty close together uh, that'll result in a lot of movement especially on a 12 inch axis so just a little bit loosening a little tap and then re-snugging them down until you get it will probably work too um, and in fact when I hit mine with the dead blow that may, may very well be where the adjustment was made and not from the plate to the Z stage itself so now that I've um, squared the Z stage here perpendicular to the uh, spoil board or the surface of the CNC. Basically, I did it um, against the mounting plate here. Um, and then I did it on this side, and then I did it on this side. And turned out I was only about a thousandth of an inch off from the very top of my 12 inch axis to the bottom. That's not perfect, but I'm not gonna shim for only a couple of thousands over 12 inches, so it's good enough for me. Um, so after you have the Z where you know it's traveling up and down perpendicular, then you can tram the spindle itself because you can have the spindle tr perfectly trammed and yet have uh, some gross air, even like 45 degrees on one of these axes. As long as the tramming does the opposite, you'll still be square to your board, but as the Z, as the, uh, Z stage goes up and down, you'll be sliding in either X or Y or both as it goes up and down. You don't want that. So that's why you do the, the stage first to get it perpendicular in travel. Then you do the spindle. And so now what I do, I've got one of these uh, tramming gauges. To be honest, they're kind of a waste of money. You can take a, a uh, router bit or, or just a simple pin and you can drill a hole into a chunk of oak 
uh, screw it down and mount a single dial indicator. I only use one of these anyway uh, because it's it's always going to be a, a circle perpendicular uh, as long as um, there's no run out on your shaft and stuff. So that's why I just use one of these and I'll you can see I've dialed this one into zero and so if I rotate it around to the back come over here and look it's at about two thousandths so I'm off two thousandths of an inch from the front to the back um, I, I'll probably shim that a little bit um, since it's not too hard to do uh, I think I got some shim stock that tin but you know a thousandths isn't much so sometimes what you can do there is uh, if it needs to be a little thicker just put something squishy like uh, glue in there and snug it up until it's uh, where you want it and then leave it till it dries and then tighten it down. Um, I've used shims that are just a hair too fat and it, sometimes you could take them out and just pound them with a hammer a little bit to thin them out but once you're down to a thousand or two it's pretty hard to to get that front to back with the shims much better than that. Um, just even tightening your bottom um, mounting screws here can and make that kind of a shift so pretty tough to to uh, get it dialed in much better left to right's really easy um, again I'm gonna you know watch one gauge here if I adjust that to zero spin it around and then come out around to the back side you can see it's right on so left to right's really easy because you got this nice tramming adjustment nut so you can get that perfect but anyway that's that's the way I do it. It's pretty simple. It took me like, you know, 15 minutes to retram this after I took my whole spindle off to adjust it. Uh, I had to move it down about an inch so it would reach my, I had it originally mounted a little bit too high. So um, that's, that's how I do it. Works pretty good anyway. So I wanted to see if I could adjust that last two thousandths difference between the front and back position of my spindle tramming uh, a little better than than I had. So I went looking for the thinnest paper I could find in the house, which was some uh, tissue paper that my wife had in her craft room. Um, this stuff measures out to around one, one and a half thou. So I'm gonna use this and see if uh, I can get that fine tune that, that two millim or two thousandth difference a little bit better. So these are my two original shims that were between, they were in the bottom of my tramming plate, between the tramming plate and the tramming mounting plate. Uh, they're a piece of, each one is the same thickness. They're a piece of folded over shim stock, stainless steel shim stock. I believe they were on the order of two to four thousandths. So that means it's four to eight thousandths thick. And I wanted to add about a thousand. So basically I just stuck one of these pieces of tissue paper inside the folded over shim stock and I'm stuffing those back in and we're going to see how that uh, works for this. All right since my shims were basically a pair of folded over stainless steel sheet stock that tissue paper that was about a thousand thick turned out to be about perfect because I got if I set it at zero on this side and come around over here it's less than a thousandth off from zero now. So uh, just a matter of finding the right stack up of, of shims um, and then locking it down. So I'm pretty much set now again for until I have to take my spindle off again for some reason. So I hope all that made sense. Um, I know this wasn't quite as detailed and step-by-step -step as some of the other instructions out there. Um, I'm kind of assuming with this that you've already read through or watch the AVID's uh, information and, and maybe some others out there. My main point with this video was to show not only the spindle tramming but the Z stage uh, tramming because a lot of the instructions I've seen out there leave that part out and I think you know that's not critical for getting overlapping to be smooth when you're like using a big um, planing bit or something the the spindle being horizontal is all that matters there but if you don't do that z stage correctly then 
your vertical surface is like when you're cutting around something, your vertical surfaces will have steps in them as your Z steps down. So uh, I wanted to really show that you know it doesn't it's not much more work to do both of them and then you'll have good results with your milling in in all directions if you have any questions or comments please leave them down in the comment section below i always answer all my questions um thank you very much